Okay. In this lecture, I'm going to be talking about the Zimmerman Traxler transition state, uh, which is used to explain the uh, chirality, the relative stereochemical um, outcome of a reaction of an enolate that looks like this and a prochiral aldehyde. Um, mechanistically, uh, something like this shouldn't be a challenge to you right now. Uh, and we can see that uh, what should happen is the negative charge goes in like that, go across. Uh, to attack the aldehyde, the inlet attacks the aldehyde, and the oxygen uh, carbon oxygen pi bond then breaks like that. Uh, the product of that reaction uh, is then beta hydroxy ketone. Uh, but the important thing here to note is in this reaction we've actually formed two new chiral centers. And it turns out that in these reactions, the control of those two new chiral centers is fairly strong uh, and good. The only problem here is that it's not, and we're not making one enantiomer, but we're going to be making a mixture of diastereomers. In the case, there's a simple rule, in the case of a cis enolate, and this is a cis enolate because the oxygen and the methyl are on the same side of the double bond, in the case of cis enolates, the product is always the one where the, whatever this group is, in this case the methyl, and the OH are on the same side. It becomes the uh, syn uh, aldol uh, product. All right, so there's a simple rule to, rem to remember that, but we need to understand the actual way that this works. Uh, just to give a bit more of an insight, uh, just it can help to look at some three-dimensional models. Um, uh, just to help us see exactly what's going on. So I have here uh, the enolate that I've uh, drawn as the T-butyl group. It's the enolate and the methyl. And we've got the aldehyde, uh, carbon of benzaldehyde over here. And the thing that's important to re recognize is when this reaction is occurring, um, remember that the reaction of the enolate is the nucleophile and it's going to be adding its electrons to the carbonyl, um, but they're not adding like this over here. They need to be adding from one face to the other. So in other words, either the aldehyde is coming in from this top face like that, or it's the other way around, switch them around and it's like that. All right, the nucleophilic part of the enolate is either straight up over here or straight down over there. And the electrophilic part, or the part that's going to accept electrophiles in the aldehyde is either over here, straight at the top, or straight at the bottom over there. Um, technically speaking, we can give these, instead of just talking about a, a top face and a bottom face, we can be more correct uh, to identify, for instance, this face over there as being the we, real psi face. And so we give it numbers, one, two, three, we're going round to the right. So the face that we're looking at, this attack from the top over here, would be to the re-face of the aldehyde. If we do it on the enolate over here, looking at the top, we've got one, two, three, that'll have the higher priority. One, two, three, we're going round to the right. And so this is the re-face over there. So if we wanted the re-face of this to add to the re-face of that, we'd need to spin this around and have them attack this way. All right, that would be the two re-faces uh, adding to, to each other. All right, um, an important thing in order to understand this um, uh, transition state is that it's actually a six-membered transition state. What we missed in this whole um, uh, mechanism over here is the importance of the lithium uh, counter ion. Um, and the lithium is coordinated to both of the oxygens. And if we count up now the number of atoms, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. There are six atoms that are connected. Uh, I've just got a little fake lithium atom over here. Um, just to show you again how it's going to control and hold these things together. One, two, three, four, tax five, six. We get a six-membered transition state. Now, it's going to be difficult for me to use these particular 3D models in order to put it together to show the three-dimensional um, shape. So I'm going to have to just do this on uh, pages, uh, which we uh, I'm going to show you now. The fact that it is a three it is a six-membered transition state uh, means that we get to use our chair uh, cyclohexane chair conformation. We need to know that 
quite well in order to answer these questions. So what I always recommend is when we start to work out the transition state, we just lightly sketch in a six-membered chair. You can barely see that there on the board that I've um, on, on my piece of paper. Just lightly sketched in all the correct uh, bits and pieces. Now remember, when I said that these two are going to react, there are two possibilities for them to, to attack. I'll bring back the models. Um, either the uh, aldehyde is going to be at the top, I'll be showing over here, and this one's going to come in from the bottom, or it's the other way around, and they're going to react like that. It's important to actually remember that, because when we use this transition state over here, we're going to be showing just the one uh, attack mode. Um, and, and always, I recommend that when we are working these things out, uh, let's put the aldehyde in the front. Um, and we're always going to put the lithium at this point on the, on the, on the, the structure. Uh, and so the oxygen of the aldehyde, now it's this one over here, is going to be, and that's going to be the carbon. So this is going to be a double bond to the uh, oxygen. We now have a choice of where we're going to put this phenyl group. I'm hoping that for all of you, you're going to be completely satisfied um, with the fact that the phenyl group that's there must be coming out in an equatorial position. It's a large group and it's going to want to be in an equatorial, not an axial position. It's going to clash with the things we get the intellect, which we're going to put um, at the back over there. So this is important. This needs to be equatorial. Uh, then we need to put the enolate in, uh, and this is where uh, we actually end up distorting the picture a little bit over here. This transition state, the Zimmerman Traxler, is not a perfect chair. It can't be because we don't have exactly six sp3 uh, hybridized carbons. It's chair-like. All right, it's not a perfect chair. It's chair-like, uh, and because of that. When we put this in, it's going to look a little bit funny, but we need the oxygen here coordinating to the lithium. This is the line of the enolate, and then this will be the double bond of the, the enolate over, over there. So the oxygen is connected to the lithium. Uh, this one can also be uh, bonded like that, but now uh, we must just erase that line that I originally drew uh, over there, because that is not uh, part that's not that's where the bond is going to form in this reaction uh, on this carbon over here now just imagine if we've taken this whole thing and we've just turned it round to fit over here then we're going to have the t-butyl group it's going to look really big and ostentatious sticking out over there all right that's that section over there and over here it's and this is where it comes a little bit distorted it actually needs to be sort of sp2 hybridized and it's going to look a little bit like that it's a little bit distorted from the way we would like to uh, normally draw sp2 hybridized carbons um, that is the hydrogen so on the same side as the t-butyl group we've got hydrogen and on the same side on the same side as the oxygen we've got the methyl group all right so now this is the zimmerman traxler transition state um, the most important thing is that the enolate itself, the way it's sitting over here, is the way it is drawn over there. There's no difference. We just have to put it in and fit it onto the structure as best as we can. The most important feature of this uh, transition state is the fact that the, the older hide has its phenyl group equatorial. If I'd put it in the axial position, it'd be bumping into this big uh, Toshi butyl group over there, so it's not favored. So then the reaction happens. Um, how does the reaction happen? Exactly the same over there. With the minus charge in the oxygen kicking in to form a, um, a carbonyl, the enolate now attacks this carbon over here, forming a new bond between uh, that carbon and that carbon, and this uh, pi bond will break, uh, forming the O minus, which will eventually be protonated to form the OH. Now when we draw this out, uh, just we draw our post reaction so again uh, just lightly sketch our little chair structure so that we get the right uh, shape just notice now the one change has been this carbon here so this carbon um, has now gone from sp2 to sp3 so we just have to just jiggle it a little bit let's get it now properly into the way it looks as a chair that's going to come straight across like that so it's a hydrogen there and we've got a ch 
three over there. Uh, if we want, uh, we could also just um, note that there's a, a hydrogen pitched in up uh, over like that. The important thing here is to recognize that in the product which we've drawn out, <coughs> we have our zigzag pattern that's running in the plane, right, from left to right, across like that. That zigzag pattern is here in the structure. Zig, zag, there, there, and there. All right, have a look at that very carefully, how that zigzag pattern that I've drawn over there is the zigzag pattern that's in that structure over there. Because this is the key part here, this is now the interpretation, is if we look at this three-dimensional structure over here, if we follow that zigzag, it's like we have to kind of turn, in order to get this, we'd have to be turning our page all the way like this. So it's, it's a bit distorted, but there's our zigzag. But when we look at our... Um, a structure over here, we can see that at these chiral centers, if this is to be our zigzag, this H over here is facing towards us and the methyl group would be facing down uh, and we get across here, this hydrogen is facing towards us and relative to this now being in the plane, the O is facing down. All right, in other words, the product of this would look like this except the methyl is down and the OH is down. This is down and this is down. That's okay because it is a racemic and um, so it also means that both of these are down and it's still sin. That would be our product. Uh, that's pretty much all you need to, to know. I'm just going to continue on now and I'm going to just draw the other Zimmerman Traxler transition state um, which is where the uh, aldehyde is at the back because at the moment it's sitting um, at, the, at the front. If we look at this, the face that the aldehyde is being attacked at, the face that we're looking at at the moment is one, two, three. It's not the face that's being attacked. One, two, three is going around to the right. So this one, the aldehyde is being attacked by the side face because this is in front and this attack is coming on from behind. It's coming from behind, coming forward to this carbon over here. Likewise, the nucleophile is attacking from the one, two, three. It's the reface. So it's the reface of this and the side face of that that's being attacked. I'm going to draw now the transition state where it's the other way around. Um, just to show you how it works, but it has nothing, you don't have to worry about, uh, this is the one that you should actually just get used to drawing uh, all the time. So for the reverse Zimmerman Traxler, what we need to do is we're going to put our lithium over here, but now the aldehyde is going to be at the back. Uh, not in the front anymore, so we're going to stick our aldehyde uh, carbonyl there. Uh, and the phenyl group needs to be in an equatorial position, not axial going up over here. That'll be the hydrogen, that'll be axial, uh, but the phenyl would be uh, over there. All right, uh, so this is the bond that's going to form, and our enolate um, will be in the front here, connected to the lithium. Um, over here would be the T-butyl group, it's in an axial position, that's the only position it can get to, it can't be anything else because it's SP2 hybridized. And likewise, this section over here is SP2 hybridized as well, so they're going to have a hydrogen there and a uh, CH3. Uh, Remember, the methyl and the oxygen were on the same side. Uh, and so the reaction is going to be forming across uh, over there. So let's just uh, follow through with the reaction, it starts at this oxygen, it's going to kick back in, that's going to kick across to form the bond and that's going to open up like like that. Uh, and so we draw out then the product of, of that, uh, which is going to look like this. Okay, just for reference, this was the structure that I first drew out on the on the other slide. Now, I remember with the previous transition state, we said that both of these were facing uh, down. Um, now, this is the structure that we've we've come up with. We look for that zigzag. It's a little bit harder to see now, uh, in my opinion, but maybe for some of you this is still easy. Um, the zigzag going from the T-butyl group is over here. Zigzag, zigzag, like that. So the difficulty with um, 
uh, with this one is that following the zigzag, here we're going from left to right t-butyl. Here, it's, we're actually going kind of like from right to left. Um, so this structure we're looking at upside down. If, if we follow just normally as we, as, as we would see it, uh, going from, from left to right, we can see that the O is facing down and the H is up over here and this methyl is down as well. So um, if we we're reading it from left to right, the O and the methyl would both be facing down. But what we need to do is to make it look like this, we have to flip the whole thing over. A little bit more difficult. I don't know if many of you can see that. Uh, but if you do that, um, you will get this um, uh, uh, structure over here. We're both in facing up. Uh, so, so this is just a, a proof or a way of showing you that um, if we put the aldehyde in a different position to the enolate, so behind and that, we would get the other enantiomer. Uh, and in this reaction, there's no control. Um, whether it goes to the front or the back. But the only control is, is in this chair-like transition state um, where the aldehyde comes in and the, the important thing of the aldehyde is that R group, the biggest group, ends up being equatorial. That controls um, the, the whole thing in, this, in the Zimmerman-Traxler uh, transition state.